So for this evening's trick, I've got a tripod and um, I think it's time to get stuck into the Grand Challenge bike. So first of all, first trick of the day, you can see we already took the battery out last time you saw the bike. Um, next trick of the day is the seat, which is nice and easy and two bolts at the sides which I pulled preemptively because um, I wanted to get this shock absorber here off that you can see is missing to measure it to order for parts. Next thing, I think we're going to go for getting the tank off. From what I can see, the tank's just this single 10mm here, which is, by the looks of it, mostly already out. And then I'd wager just a yank. I can tell you by the feel of the tank that it's completely empty. Um, we should probably at some point have a look inside it to see if it's badly corroded. wonder where we go from here. So the um, original battery, the new one hasn't arrived yet, it's been out here on the uh, charger for quite a while. It's one of those maintenance and repair CTEX. So there's a chance it might have brought this battery back to life and when I measured the voltage yesterday, I was looking hopeful. So I've got a couple of uh, jump leads, just going to give it a go. That's an unhappy noise and it means not quite. So before it starts raining and in the interest of complete danger, I've decided this is the best way to find out if it works. But first, I figure we should probably dump a bit of oil down the cylinder. Um, just in case it is locked up, it'll make its life a little bit easier. Got some lovely used gearbox oil. Ought to be nice and smoky. Um, and we've got lights on the dashboard. It's in neutral. Let's give it a go. Sounds like an engine. Just going to guess that it's probably got spark and um, completely inappropriate, got some cleaning spray. Got a little bit of that down the back of the car boot and a little bit down the open fuel hose. Let's find out what happens. Sounds like an engine to me. <laughs> Is that idling? I sprayed some down into the float bowl. I have no idea how quickly this stuff off gasses, but it sounds to me like it's running. Won't rev, but then what do you expect? Oh, there you go, it's running out now. Hey, success. I think we're going to have another go at that and we're going to um, find out if the gears are working properly. Well, the stop switch on the uh, side stand works. It 
Sounds like gears. Feels like gears, the clutch is horrible. I think we'll call that a success. That ran for far longer than it had any right to on a bowl full of uh, contact cleaner. It started to rain out here though, so I think it's about time that we um, dive inside and do something more constructive than this messing about. Okay, we're inside now, and um, since you last saw me, it's gone dark and started blowing an absolute gale. So I figured we'd take a look at something a lot warmer, uh, namely the fuel tank now that it's off. Bit of a shame, it's fairly rotten on the inside, but that's nothing about a rust converter and something to cover it up, won't sort out. I've been around it with a screwdriver of truth, giving it a good knock, and um, it will hold fuel, so that will do us for now. If it was a show bike, we might consider doing something else, but it's not. Um, the next thing I want to address is this fuel tap, which is really, really stiff. Um, and really to get an idea of what the inside of the tank looks like. So I'm just going to grab the key out of the bike. Pop open the hole and um, I don't think you'll be able to see very much in there. But it's not awful. I've certainly seen better. But what I do have, uh, hiding over here on the shelf, for exactly this occasion is a monster grub tub of oxalic acid. Mix this up 1 to 10, chuck it in the tank, throw it around, it'll get rid of all the rust, and then follow that down with a um, healthy dose of two-stroke oil infused petrol. Wash it all around. Don't let the tank be empty uh, more than you have to. And after a while the fuel vapour and the deposits from the fuel should take care of preventing the rust from coming back. So, now that we, or should I say I know, that the inside of the tank is not awful, let's take a look at this uh, fuel tap. It's got a pair of Phillips type or Posi Drive type. I think they're actually Phillips. That might even be JIS based on the year of the bike. But this screwdriver fits nice and tightly. And they're coming out just fine. There's the inside of the fuel tap, and mm, smells absolutely delicious like waxy fuel. I'm just going to grab something to get the bottom off of this. Sorry for knocking your legs there. And I'm expecting to see... No, I thought there might be a filter in here, but there's not. It's just a water catchment bowl, I'd guess. And uh, we're going to go straight ahead with two things, I think. Um, in fact, no, just one thing. I was thinking about putting some cleaner up it, but I don't want to introduce anything too harsh because I'd imagine the rubber in here has um, seen better days. So we're on reserve at the moment. So I'm just going to stick this up there and give it a blast. In fact, if I put this bottom cap back on again, I'll be able to give you a fairly good demonstration of how um, reserve works. So this bike doesn't have a a fuel gauge 
Um, for those who've never met one, it was an older bike thing. So it doesn't have a fuel gauge, it just has two positions on the fuel tap. And um, when it's in the reserve position, if I give this a squeeze, can you see the, uh, let me get back in shot, the WD-40 is coming up this bottom B piece here. Whereas, and hopefully this starts to move now. There we go, it's actually smoothed right out. If I do this in the on position, it comes all the way up out of the top. And the way this works is when it's sat in the tank, as the fuel level falls, eventually when it drops below here, it will stop going down the on position. The bike will run out of fuel, it'll cut out. You pull over at the side of the road. If you're a proper old hand, you knock your tank so you know how much fuel you've got by air and you spin this round to reserve and it starts to draw from here instead allowing you to carry on for that long uh, hopefully to a petrol station it says in the bike's manual how far you should get on uh, reserve but you start to learn it without having to um, you know read the manual you just know i'll get about that far on reserve and you head straight to a petrol station so i'm going to leave this with plenty of wd-40 in it overnight Hopefully it gets even easier to turn. It is starting to free up. But um, yeah, if we can save that all the better. Looking at the hole in the tank, it's actually an O-ring that seals onto here and the paint's in really good condition. There's a bit of varnished fuel around it though. I'm probably um, tempting fate here by wiping that varnished fuel off. That's probably what's making it seal. Um, but yeah, I think we'll... Uh, Look at finding something to block up that hole, or maybe just leave the tank on its top like this. Uh, and we're going to fill it to the brim with oxalic acid and water, preferably hot water when you start. This works within about an hour. Um, you can leave it longer. If the tank had really thin spots, you wouldn't want to leave it too long because it might well convert the rust all the way through the tank. And you don't want to leave anything that might be uh, prone to any kind of degradation in the presence of the acid so probably not the plastic in the pet cock or fuel tap depending on what side of the Atlantic you're on um, and probably not any rubber seals either so when we do this one we're going to be careful not to um, get the oxalic acid around the seal that I think exists in here some of these have a strong metal seal instead of rubber but no this bike does have a rubber seal so we'll just um, while we're here Give all of this a douse down because it does have an air admittance valve in it and I think what we might even do is um, take this off and give everything a good clean, get some auto sol on the rust. And uh, then also give this a nice polish, see if we can uh, make this thing look a little more presentable. I'm going to do the oxalic acid off camera more than likely because I don't want to be worrying about um, knocking the camera over or anything. While I'm trying not to get acid in my eyes, I'm a horribly clumsy person. Um, and that's the last thing I need, is um, trying to do the grand challenge with only one eye. Realistically speaking, the oxalic acid isn't that dangerous, but general rule, don't put acid in your eyes. Um, so that's uh, it for today. We'll um, catch up again when the tank's had its acid treatment. And uh, maybe we'll take a look at... What shall we do next? Probably the carburetor. I want to get this thing running so that I can get it up to temperature, change the oil, change the oil filter if it has one. Um, and that should take us along nicely until the rest of the parts arrive. So I'll see you next time.